Hey guys, got a quick little update on the 37 Big Twin flathead here. I finally got my skirt oilers, my piston squirters connected. We had to do some welding on the casting down there. Um, my buddy Joe got that sorted out for me. And I thought that the casting itself was actually oozing out a little down there. Uh, leaking oil so I just smeared some RTV on there just uh, just real quick but um, I don't uh, it was actually leaking from the banjo fitting itself and I had to play around with uh, different ways to get it sealed up but what I did was I've got an o-ring on the back side between the case and the banjo itself and I just super glued it to the banjo fitting so it would stay in place then I put the banjo fitting on. Then there's a copper washer on the outside and uh, the the nut uh, after all that. And there's some green stuff you can kind of see. I'm trying to light this up with my flashlight but not wash it out too bad. That is gasoila. And it's uh, basically a thread sealant, I believe. The whole purpose of doing this, I got this idea from Dick Lynn. I will try to throw a, a picture or something in here of uh, kind of what I've done. But I have skirt oilers that I added to the case and oil is fed to them uh, through this hose here. And the idea is to spray oil to help keep everything nice and cool they spray oil on the bottom of the pistons these big twin flatheads as i've talked about in some of my other videos are they were they were under lubricated from the factory it wasn't as much of a problem with the 45s for whatever reason and this isn't just my opinion this is really me parroting stuff that i've read from people that i consider way more knowledgeable than myself like dick lynn being one of them so i've got my chp feed pump here and the takeoff for the skirt oilers is here and since it's not regulated by the check ball that keeps oil in the tank if you don't have the the ball valve here or if you forget to turn it off then uh, you know oil will leak in and it'll wet sump when you start it the next day not a big deal just you know gotta remember that so hopefully in doing all this this will enable this motor to run uh, a lot longer between top end overhauls and keep up with modern traffic. And I was riding this thing the other day with uh, one of my buddy's shovel heads. And, you know, I'm not going to beat a shovel head in a race with this thing, but I was definitely keeping up with him 60, 65, you know, whatever. So I'm going to start the bike and turn the oilers on and then get a shot of the return flow because the return flow with the skirt oilers going is very strong it's stronger than i've ever seen uh, the return flow be on a flathead you know this is the only one i have personal experience with but in one of my other videos i, I showed different oil pumps i did just this chp pump without the skirt oilers going and a genuine Harley Davidson two vein feed pump and then a repop uh, feed pump with a four vein conversion kit. And in that video, I kind of show the difference in return flow in the tank. So I'll be right back. I have the idle speed cranked up uh, a little bit here because I just started the bike and it's cold. I'll turn it down here in a second. But you can see this oil flow is really strong and this is probably pretty representative of the kind of oil return flow you'd be getting uh, going down the road you know with a, a load on the motor and into the throttle a little bit this return flow it's, to me looks as strong as the shovel heads and pan heads I've seen maybe even evos for that matter um, I've never seen a flathead with this strong of a return flow. So I'll idle the bike down here a little bit and you can see that the amount of oil returning is less because of the 
motor is turning slower, as you would expect, but still very strong. So, again, and the whole name of the game here is if we can get more oil into the motor and return it back to the tank, uh, we're going to be pulling heat out of the motor uh, better than we could before, keeping everything nice and nice and cool. I have been shutting off the ball valve that feeds the skirt oilers uh, a few seconds before I turn the motor off, just thinking that that will allow the scavenger pump to evacuate any extra oil out of the motor before shutdown, and uh, you'd be less likely to have a little bit of oil puke out of the crankcase breather the next time you start it up. I don't know how much that matters. I haven't really played around with it a whole lot yet but uh, yeah here you go skirt oilers on a 1937 big twin flathead 